Welcome to Trading Lounge and the Bitcoin report for Friday, September the 9th. So I'm going to start with Ethereum and we're going to look at it in, in a couple of different ways. Okay, so first of all, this would be looking at it in terms of uh, the stock market, um, the NASDAQ and the tech stocks and so on. So um, in that case, we're looking at this as an A wave up here and then an A wave here and then going up for a B wave here and then coming down for a C wave here. So basically an A, B, C to come to here and then a C wave up here for a larger B wave. And then we go into the Ice Age. Okay, so um, the other account, the other account you could look at this for, but it just wouldn't match up. If you looked at this as wave one up here, and then back for wave two, going up for wave three. Now that's possible, but the stock market is not telling me that uh, story. Um, if the US dollar index has got a top in play, which is possible, then the equity market can lift up from that point. And that's why we're seeing this rally, by the way, too, in, a, in, in, in part, um, is we're seeing the US dollar um, drop off its uh, high. So you can have a look at that video to see where that is at the moment. But um, yeah, as far as this goes here on the intraday basis, we're just looking here as we followed on from yesterday is that an A wave, an ABC for the B wave is an expanded flat and then a push up to the 61.8% and then move down. And this will push up in line with the equity um, ABC pattern as well. Now also too, when we get this uh, move in, uh, in, in play here, then uh, we're looking at it as uh, wave B, but we could also look at it as wave two. So really, if you're a trader, then we need to look at, well, I mean, this move here looks quite corrective, doesn't it? I mean, sure, we could look at it as wave one here with an A, B, C, D, E here as wave two or something like that, but it's just a bit weird. So it fits better. This whole pattern as a move to the upside uh, looks uh, and feels uh, like it's uh, got the right count here as a corrective move. Now, the thing is, is that it could be wave one and wave two here and coming down for uh, wave three at that point, um, which would take us down low. So we, we kind of want to find our way in short here. So we could wait for the first impulse wave to confirm the uh, price direction and then look at the corrective rally and look to shorter at that particular point. So we'll find a way in. It's not not a big deal, but we just have to allow the market to come to us rather than chase it. So if we were looking at a different picture here, so <clears throat> in this space here, we would be looking at, let's just copy this wave B here for a moment, just so we've got a little bit of um, clarity here. And this C wave here would need to um, go up a degree of structure as well. So in this, if I labeled it this way, so this would be this wave C over here. And then over here, do we have a wave C over here? No, we don't, but we'd put this over here. So look, it might not be a nice ABC pattern like this coming down here. It'll probably end up being, um, <clears throat> being much more of a sideways pattern, but that doesn't really matter at this point. So this is one of the patterns. In the stock market, we've either got an A, B, C up here for a B wave and go down for the C wave, or we've got this B wave over here and we come down for the C wave over here and we look at this as one and two and three and four and five. It's that kind of simple. Um, we could also view this a little bit differently as well, which we're going to have a look on the daily chart. So I'll just put this back here and go to the daily chart. And this is a good valid count as well here. So with this one here, looking at a top being in place here, then looking down at this as wave one here and wave two and wave three here and going back for wave four, it's pulled back to the 38.2% retracement level. It hasn't overlapped wave one here. And if that was the case, then we would see this current move down here is wave one, which we can count as five waves, it's not a big deal, back to the 1800 roughly, 1772 to 1800 in that space, and then see wave three, 
four come down to here there'll be off the old lows at 1000 there'll be a whole lot of uh, consolidations there and then wave five to the downside there so we could look at it like this as well that's um uh, it's possible so it's still kind of in line with one of the counts we've got on the uh on, on the uh, on the global market so that's all good and if this was the case then we would have actually five waves down here so we would have to look at that as wave a and then we would need after five waves you would get a corrective rally back up for wave b and then we would get a wave c down so you know the folks that are new to the crypto market you know they all normally buy in at the tops over here once it's become sort of public and all the rest of it and and there's a lot of people that you know so many hodlers are, are just not selling you know um and you know good for them as well but i assure you that um you know there's a lot more to go yet we're just if we get five waves here then you're you're only in the first leg here so you've spent like the time this finishes at christmas time or whatever whatever uh, before that probably um you know there's a whole year there this b wave can be a year and this can be a year you know so it could be two years it could be four you know unless you've been into the crypto market for more than four years or five years you know whether the the, the cycling is in four years so we'll say for, if you haven't had money in this market for four years then you're simply not experienced enough to know what's actually coming here next you know there's a lot more uh you know there's a <laughs> there's a lot more um uh sort of sadness to come yet you know for all of this um but i do see that as an opportunity rather than a um uh then i see it as a positive rather than a negative i mean for me because you know if bitcoin you know from here and all the rest of it just went up to a hundred thousand two hundred thousand well then you'd never get the opportunity to to, to buy these buy coins again down you know at that at, at these prices here so I think that uh, this is just another amazing opportunity to accumulate a lot over the next, uh, you know, two, two to three years, whatever this is, could take, um, and uh, get as much as you can, um, because you'll be able to retire once these tops get taken out. And if we do go into a global recession, you know, that's where, you know, S-curve in new technologies come from. So there's a whole lot of, you know, new technologies, the AI and the, ro the robotics and the 3D print, all of these things are just starting, you know. So there, that's the new world. And, uh, and we'll be going into the new world after, after, you know, we have a war or, you know, there's more angst in the, in, around the globe and all the rest of it, you know. I mean, all that's got to be washed out. So um yeah i think it's pretty exciting actually um but anyway that's anyway just talking about um ethereum in in a couple of different ways so yeah i mean in this bigger picture here just the other count here would be looking at this here looking at this up here if i can just um go back over what we looked at before looking at an a wave up there at this one and then here is an a b c to come back to this point as i move down and then then go up for a b wave here which will be this b wave over here and then come down for a c wave at that point i mean it can't go past zero i understand all of that but um it'll be, it'll be you know it'll be it'll be something like this you know so they're the two patterns that will play out so we'll just see you know uh, as time goes on, we'll be able to eliminate one and move to the other and, and so on. But uh, yeah, all a little bit complicated there. Let's have a look at um, Bitcoin. So let's just have a look at the bigger picture of Bitcoin. Uh, we, I think we looked at this last time, didn't we, or something. But anyway, from the top there, the medium level 65, halfway between two major levels, uh, 50 and 80, Fibonacci sequence as a price ratio. So the top here as one and two, and down for three here, nothing wrong with that count. And we can look at this being wave four here, and then we could move down for wave five. And then this move down here, we can count that as wave one, back for wave two as we talked about, down for three, four, five. 
So that's possible. That would also give us five waves down. And in fact, you know, if this low gets taken out here, for, I mean, you can have a beat. You know, we could look at this here in terms of the other count that we've got with the stocks. We look at this one as wave A here, wave B here, and then wave C up here for the B wave and then go down. So that's possible as well. They're the two count. They're the, basically the two counts for everything, you know. And if we do have this A wave down here, then we'll have an A, B, C back up for the B wave and down for the C wave. And if you go back and have a look at history, um, even the last, you know, 2017 bear market, you know, we had these three swings here, you know, and we could travel sideways from, you know, in all of that as well and get a bit more sort of complicated. But if we get... If we get if we breach this low down here, then that's going to be five waves at that point. You know, that's going to be one, two, three, four, and five. Now that's a very short fifth wave there, isn't it? You know, this from wave four to wave five. So it will end up being down at ten thousand here because it just needs to be. You know, this wave three here is a bit sh shorter than this wave one here by a little bit. So that means that wave five here will be shorter than this one here. But still, it would still be down here lower in all of that. And if that was the case of having five waves here, well, then we would get um, uh, an ABC back up. So we've got that path here. If the US dollar, for instance, has got a top in play, right, then um, we will see the dollar come down, we'll see stocks go up, and that, including tech stocks and so on. So then this B wave here can come into play. But with this B wave here, we still need another leg down here as well. So we'll need an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave for the B wave. And then and then we can come up from, to grab this dude here, that from that point there as a, as a double bottom and then bounce back up and then come down. So that's the, the way of the stock. So... <coughs> um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, really, at the moment. We've been counting five waves down here, so that's got us low in place. Now, it's very normal for this market to go back and check the um, the closest largest number as a retest, and, of course, that's the 20,000, so it will retest that. If we get a classic trading levels pattern on top of that, well, then, fine, you know, we'll look to go further to the upside. But, you know, it's so normal for the market to come down, bounce like a ball for a while, and then drop down, and then go back and retest. You know, that's the, that's the, that's the basic pattern of things. You know, come down, bounce off a level, drop through it eventually, go back and retest it and drop. So sometimes it can go back above the level there, and in fact, that's what it normally does most of the time. It'll have an ABC back above the level and then go down. So if it is that, that's the most common pattern. So we could look at all of this here as wave one and then this leg here in three waves back above the level and then go down at that point. But the problem with all of this is that we need to time, we need to bring the crypto market into with the NASDAQ and those stocks and that into that whole money flow of things because, you know, like you look at, if you trade, if you've traded indices, they're all, they're all mirroring each other and they can do it pretty quickly. You know, there's some pretty fancy computer systems out there that look for these little inefficiencies and so on. So that's really what's happening with, um, with, with uh, crypto in line with the uh, tech stocks. Obviously some, uh, you know, some big computer systems are in there now, so, you know, looking for those little inefficiencies and they, they, under they, they understand it, they know it. Um, that, so this could be, this could, this could play out both ways. So just flipping over into the um, 5K tick chart, we'd been looking at this as a triangle pattern across here and then a drop. Now, we could look at this in a couple of different ways. First of all, this all these five waves down here, here, we've looked at this as wave one here going back for wave two. So that's still possible. It's not really sort of getting up there much. We'll still need a this leg here, the A wave, the B wave. We'll still need sort of something over here. We'll hit supply here and then it can go down at that point, depending on how far it'll go. So that's still possible. And if that's not the case, then we'll need to put this larger wave one in here. And then we'll look for wave two up here. So we would look for a larger uh, corrective move to come uh, into play. Let's just put it up there and then down at that point. So what we're going to do, the same with stock market, <clears throat> we're just going to allow the uh, stock market to um, to do its thing. And uh, then uh, that means that... Uh, 
that means that uh, let's just uh, have a bit of a look um, just trying to find the S&P 500 we've got so many charts open all over the place here so I don't think I've got it here at the moment it doesn't really matter you can have a look at the stock video anyway to find out that so we're not going to do anything at this point but um, we just want to see how far Bitcoin rallies if it rallies to here and then goes down we'll look at this as one and two and three four five to the downside to finish this off as a larger wave five to the downside um, otherwise we'll look at this as wave one and two and move down at this point but you can see that there's a lot of resistance here at this point so any move back up here is going to be shy so all we just need to do is give it some time we don't need to we don't need to do anything here you know and even if it even if it moves up here eventually well the drop here we'll see if that's in five waves because then we'll just have the abc left here and the short trade will come from that point if it's going to find support on this level or well, then uh, we would need to see the arrival the reaction the first high above the level and then an abc pattern here for this and then we could go long at that point okay uh, if that's triggered at that point, but we definitely need that now this can push up here But basically, you know the bottom end of this triangle uh, here. I've got the wrong little dude there That's going to be you know where wherever that is there. That's going to you know create the resistance there and you've also got the 61.8 percent at the beginning of these I'll probably lift that up a little bit further just to be fair to be fair but the 19,500 is going to be a tough um, space for spot for this um, market here. Alrighty, um, I'll leave it all at that. Bit of food for thought. Cheers.